Hi, I'm Ed Hyland, and this is ASA TV, and I'm honored to be joined now by Dr. Mike Schweitzer, who is the chairman of the Future Models of Anesthesia Practice. Uh, Dr. Schweitzer, thanks so much for coming by. And we're talking about perioperative care models, and uh, kind of give us an idea, sort of a, a state of the union, if you will, as to where we're at and, and where we'd like to go. Well, if you've ever been a patient, or if you've had a family member be a patient, you realize how disconnected and disjointed the whole care process is from the decision of surgery preoperative phase to the surgery and then post-discharge and home for the first 30 days. It's totally disconnected. There's no communication, no collaboration. We need to fix that process. We can do better. The term you were using was re-engineering. Yes, to re-engineer that whole process to say it's broken now. There's Because of the lack of communication and lack of collaboration, we need to re-engineer the process to streamline it, make it better from the patient's point of view. The patient thinks that we're all talking, that we're all collaborating, we're all working together, and we're not. We need to re-engineer your process so that we are. Now, ASA is committed to uh, the PSH. Give us an idea of uh, what you're hoping to accomplish utilizing that model. So the perioperative surgical home model is, starts with the shared decision making for surgery with the patient and the surgeon. And then after that decision for surgery is made, we pre-optimize the care. Sometimes people call it prehabilitation. So we work with the patient to identify any gaps in care that we can fix before they even come to surgery, the day of surgery. So for example, if a patient's anemic, if we know that ahead of time, we can work with that patient for six weeks or two months prior to the day of surgery and fix that condition of care so that they heal faster afterwards and they go home with less, less chances of complications and less chances of returning to the hospital. Now, give us an idea of, of uh, what seems to be the biggest challenge right now. I mean, it seems like common sense to go to a, essentially a standardized or re-engineered model, if you will, but uh, uh, right now it's a little bit disjointed, I understand. Well, so there's a few barriers to change. Uh, the first barriers to change is no one likes to. <laughs> <laughs> Always a challenge. Uh, the second barrier to change is to get all the stakeholders around in the room at the same time and say, we know it's broken. Let's work together to fix it. Now, has ASA come forward with a, a blueprint, if you will? So what we have now is a collaborative. We have 43 healthcare organizations from across the country that are working in a year-long collaborative to identify three things. Essentially, we want to identify the best delivery model. And the best delivery model would be the best delivery model for a community hospital, best delivery model for an academic hospital, best delivery model for a pediatric hospital, and best delivery model for a surgery center. And those, all, those delivery models may well be different. And you may have to tweak each model for each local community. So that's the first goal. The second goal is to identify a payment model. Because unless you have a payment to sustain this new delivery model, it's not going to work. People aren't going to do a lot more work for free, even if it's the right thing to do. So we're going to be identifying payment models to sustain the delivery model. And the third goal of this year-long collaborative run by the American Society of Anesthesiologists is to identify how you put this together so you have an implementation toolkit so people can rapidly implement this process, this re-engineered process of care in their own organization. I was going to ask, uh, patient quality obviously is first and foremost. Uh, you've got the quality factor of the patient, but there's always the, the concern about uh, the added cost and, and how to make this something a, as a viable uh, alternative to perhaps the method or the model that you're currently using. Well, as we shift from that old fee-for-service model towards, towards a model of paying for value or paying for outcomes, we have to not only shift our delivery model, but we have to shift our payment model. So the people who are involved, the stakeholders sitting around the room who are involved in this re-engineering process, they need to be rewarded for that change so that when you improve the quality of care for the patient, when you improve the patient experience, you reduce the complications because you've standardized the care and made it more evidence-based, that those folks sitting around that table are rewarded for that to sustain that new delivery model. Will you have advisors? Will you have people that are available uh, for, for people that have questions? Uh, in other words, is there a give and take here that will allow folks who are interested in learning more that will uh, give them an opportunity or a platform to do that? So with this uh, year-long collaborative that we're in the middle of right now, we have you know, uh, leading practices from around the country, leading organizations from around the country who already have pilot programs in place 
they're sharing their leading practices with the other organizations and so we're combining all of these organizations together, sharing leading practices, trialing leading practices to see it works in this community organization, does it work in this community organization? Sharing the information, we're collecting data, and we intend to report out at the end of this year-long collaborative that toolkit so that you can rapidly implement the delivery model and payment model in your own community. So looking at the crystal ball, will we have results in this data you're talking about, uh, perhaps by the next uh, ASA meeting? We certainly hope so. Yes, and we'd, we'd like to report out at the next ASA meeting. We'll certainly be sharing information as we go along, but we really have to put that full package together. And once we have that full package together, our next goal is to create a three-year-long demonstration project so that more organizations can be involved nationwide with their pilot programs in the perioperative surgical home and we can prove this concept works nationwide. So you're talking about something that's not just willy-nilly. I mean, you're talking about a roughly four-year-plus implementation, you know, study, gather data, and implementation phase. Yes, absolutely. So one of the things that uh, physician anesthesiologists need to learn is project management skills, uh, performance improvement methodology skills. And so not every physician in every group needs to learn these skills, but some physician, a physician or a couple physicians in each anesthesia group needs to learn more about project management and performance improvement methodology so they can represent their group at that table of leaders who are re-engineering the change for the perioperative surgical home. Regular updates on the ASA website? We have a website on the, for the ASA and we'll be giving updates as we get them, yes. Dr. Schweitzer, thank you so much for coming by and joining us and sharing uh, the information about this incredibly important uh, and uh, well thought out uh, process of looking for the perioperative care. Well, thank you, Ed. We're very excited about this project and we think it's the future of anesthesia. Thanks for joining us again on ASA TV.